Welcome to this class. So we are going to paint uh, this boat and we have a beach here. Um, we're going to divide everything into segments so it's much easier to follow along and it's much easier to paint. I have all these colors. I chose marine blue and cobalt green for the water and that's because like the bottom part when you take a look at the reference image uh, you see like some kind of like cobalt green however you could go with turquoise blue you could go with cobalt turquoise light uh, depending on the brand of watercolors you're using because uh, they might call these similar colors different ways so you want to have like a lighter turquoise color let's say maybe cobalt green-ish and then like a darker sea green even or uh, I have marine blue which is like a it's blue it's a sea blue color which you could go with uh, is even just ultramarine for example if you don't have this color or you could go with so many different colors you could even go with Prussian blue that's why there's absolutely no pressure to match the colors I have yellows so the imidazolone lemon is going to be for the boat and then even as a long yellow, I'm going to use uh, for the palm tree. Now I could just go with the even as a long lemon to make it really simple and to limit my color palette. Um, so I wouldn't use this one, right? Since I'm not using even as a long yellow really for the boat. But I feel like I would, uh, I would my painting would kind of benefit more if I had like a even warmer yellow and this is a primary yellow according to Holbein's color chart then I have yellow ochre and then I have rose sienna you never have to use both it's just that I love both of these colors and whenever I paint sand I use yellow ochre and then I add a little bit of quinacridone red to it sometimes I even add gold and I do have a little bit of gold on my palette already and that adds that shimmer to it now uh, another option is that I'm going to add here when we paint sand so we'll add that yellow ochre wet on wet with some quinacridone red maybe a tiny bit of rosina you can add also cobalt blue if you think about it primary colors are blue yellow and red and when you add a little bit of kind of like a blue gray I'd say or even yellow gray over the sand that adds that glow to it in a way so think of it this way Whenever you mix the three colors together, so I'll make it easier so you can see it. The quinacridone red is not the primary red according to Holbein's color chart. Uh, it, it would be pearl red, but I prefer quinacridone red. Then I have primary yellow and then primary blue, follow blue red shade. When you mix the three together, you technically create a shade of gray. And then it's just a matter of how much yellow or how much red or how much blue you have in there to determine if it's a yellow gray blue gray or red gray and that's how we're going to kind of play uh, with the colors to add that glow over the sand and the same thing is when we uh, start working on those footprints so that will be another thing when we work on the sand uh, we'll get to that and i'll be guiding you through i do have van dyke brown so when you take a look at the reference image we have a foam, uh, so there is a wave and the foam, and then we have like a little bit of that brown. So that's where I want to use some of the Van Dyke brown, but I'm going to mix that with the quinacridone red just to warm it up a bit. Next is the uh, palm tree. So palm tree has lots of different colors. I'm going to use actually sap green, some burnt sienna. You can add different shades of green. You can add different shades of yellows. You can even add iso yellow deep if you want to. Now for the sky. I usually go with a follow blue actually and uh, follow blue works very well with quinacridone red so I like to use these two for the sky overall and what happens is I, I start adding a tiny bit of quin red to so that blue and then my uh, blue becomes more like a blue violet and so on and when I look at the sky it kind of feels like it like that the shade changes so at the top we have like an intense blue and it doesn't really look like a clean follow blue uh, it looks like already has a little bit of like that red in it and then maybe we on the in the middle section which would be like right here or actually here because my sky is much smaller uh, I would just have maybe cleaner follow blue and then for the clouds I would have uh, I'd say more like a follow blue and uh, quinacridone red again and um, what are other colors I have? I have cobalt blue. So when I was mentioning about working on the sand and on top of like adding the yellow 
ochre to the wet surface of the paper with a little bit of quint red. And then going to, to those primary colors, yellow, blue, red. I think instead of follow blue, I might actually use cobalt blue just because I love this color and I know they mix very well together. So this is optional, it's totally up to you. I'm going to place these colors on the side. I want you to know that it's not that necessary to match any of these colors. It's uh, actually more important that you get to know your own color palette because uh, a lot of you don't paint with whole wine and that's totally okay. Now, what do I have here? This is a wax stick. I do use wax stick occasionally instead of masking fluid for watercolors. And what wax stick is just a candle. And when you rub it into the paper, it just stays there. You never take it off. You, you just don't remove it. You let it sit there. It masks the areas very nicely and I sharpened it a little bit so it's kind of pointy and that's because I want to add a little bit of that wax stick on top of the boat, just a little bit on top here. I use it to create that foam, but I kind of twist it, I turn it, and then I look for those white areas on the water. And then this is my foam here. So I'm just going to kind of turn it a little bit. And what works is having a textured paper because then the foam looks really nice. Now, we're going to start by wetting the sky. and It's okay to go over the water. So you can also wet the water. We're not going to paint water until later. We're gonna do this in stages. First, we're going to cover the sky, and then we're going to paint the sand, omitting the boat and then the tree trunk. Now, um, when we paint the sky, we're going to wet it. This is going to be wet on wet. We don't worry about the palm tree. The palm tree will come later. So we will add all the blue tones for the sky, and then we will uh, let that to dry, and then we're going to paint the palm tree. So first we paint the sky, wet on wet. We're going to omit the areas for the clouds so we can shape the clouds, so we can have the clouds. And then we're gonna paint the tree actually much later. Once we have the water in and once we have the sand in, that will be probably our last thing. And for the clouds, there's so many different ways to paint these clouds. Um, first of all, we can wet only the top of the, above the clouds, right? So everything blue that you see in there uh, above the clouds. So you wet all that area when you take a look at the reference image. And then you kind of wet from the bottom the clouds and you have like slight hard edges, but you could shape these clouds. You, you'll have like hard edges, but sometimes it looks really pretty, especially when you have like really white clouds. You can do it this way by omitting some of the top parts of the clouds, the sketch lines to keep them paper dry. And then you just add the colors from the bottom and that's when you want to mix the red with the blue to create additional shades of that blue. So blue violet ish. And you can also like add a little bit of yellow. That would be beneficial. Maybe some, yeah, so blue, yellow, red. So what I need is mostly follow blue here. So this is my follow blue, it's a drier paint. And then I already have a little bit of quin red to create that blue violet, right? So a little more water. I don't want this to be uh, too thick either, but this is pretty good. This is drier paint, so I used a little more water. There you go. I didn't squeeze all the colors yet because I'm not getting to the water yet, so I don't need like marine blue, for example. Uh, but because of the clouds, I'm gonna clean the brush. I am going to dilute this. Actually, this is imidazolam yellow, and I was saying I'm gonna use mostly uh, imidazolam lemon, but this is my imidazolam yellow, and I'm gonna use it for the clouds too, for the bottom parts of the clouds. This is my quin red. I guess I'll just use that over here. Just a little bit of quin red, and this is my yellow ochre. There's some gold here. I'm going. To, I need to dilute these colors with water because this is all dry. And that when the time comes, and this is uh, raw sienna, when the time comes, that's when I'm going to blend these colors very slightly on my palette. And this is uh, Van Dyke Brown. This is very dry. I am going to use this when I get to the sand. So maybe a little bit of water will help because it will take me a few minutes to paint the sky. But at least maybe I'll have this Van Dyke Brown ready. Sometimes I just end up squeezing more paint onto the palette even I don't have I, even though I have this color already here that's because 
uh, Bandai Brown is a good example of it. It just dries like a rock. And it's just the way it is, the pigment. So I have to spend either more time on diluting it with water or I just need to squeeze more paint, fresh paint. So the first thing is to wet the background so the sky only, right?